can tell was a stun. It's like, oh, come on, three of us. We'll Get ready up. for karate. Roll on you, get on. Come on. Ah, uh, yeah. Spider Man Miles Morales the DLC turned into a full game. It's got good gameplay and feels like an improvement over the original in some areas. Maybe that's due to me playing the first Spider Man game on the PS4, throwing me off. 60 FPS and, and some form of ray tracing is a welcome change. The combat is enjoyable. The characters are okay. Maybe it's just me, but I kind of find the dialogue corny at times. Yeah, but uh, it melted after I absorbed energy from a new form reactor. What? How are you not dead? Felt like it was for a minute there. But then I released all the energy in kind of a mini explosion. Luckily, I didn't bring down the whole lab. Man, I gotta start taking notes on all your new powers. And his story is predictable. The fact Miles has to face bargain bin enemies doesn't help anything either. Oftentimes, this leads to everything being predictable. The side quest I didn't care to even bother finishing. Holiday meals, but the trucks snowed in. Families are counting on this food. Can you help? I think so. Let me see if I can pull you out that snow. As the other spider would say, snow problem. You are awesome. It's free. Physics is the real hero. And the game suffers from the same police chases, drug deals, and enemy recycling of the last game. I don't know how many times I gotta jump on top of a car, jump to the left, punch, jump to the right, punch. Jump behind the car, rapidly press square, stop the car from crashing. And the thing that makes no sense is like nobody's in the car pressing the gas pedal. So already the car would be engine braking. But I'm being too realistic in this. It's a game about people with spider powers. If the game was priced at like, I don't know, $29, $39, I'd say all right. But the updated version with the previous Spider-Man game, uh, special edition remaster for PS5, I recall being, what, $69 or $79, I can't remember. It just doesn't sit right with me. And the fact they changed the original character design to some offshoot of the new version of Spider-Man, I don't know what the guy's name is, I want to call him Topher Grace, but I know that's not right. It just seems like Sony is in love with this guy. If only a company like Google would blow me the way they blow him, oh well. Basically, the story is Spider-Man, the real Spider-Man, Peter Parker, leaves town with Mary Jane, who is now a photographer at the Daily Bugle. If you read comic books, Mary Jane was always like a model or something or an actress, and she was stone cold hot. The new Mary Jane is absolutely annoying as fuck. Like, I don't know what, who, man, I'm not, no, we're not talking comic books. Whatever, the new lamer Mary Jane that I wouldn't cross a street to help. Peter Parker's chasing her around Europe to do photos for her and get in friend zone. I don't know. I didn't finish the first Spider-Man game. Maybe they did it back together. I don't even care anymore. You know, I'm just here to swing for buildings. Oh, and at least like uh, the bootleg Commissioner Gordon, you know, the Asian chick, because I don't even know why they had her in the last Spider-Man game. She's gone. So that's a good choice. I got tired of hearing her through the damn thing. Spider-Man, check this out. I'm like, who the hell do you think you are? Why is Spider-Man working with the police chief? Do you guys, are you guys so devoid of ideas, they're like, copy Batman Arkham Knight, but make it Spider-Man, and give him an Asian Commissioner Gordon, progressivism, whatever, forgive me. I really didn't understand that Spider-Man doesn't need that. If I want that, I'd play, whatever. Anyway, Miles isn't bad, but he isn't great either. And as I said before, he says some lame shit I've never heard anybody in the hood say. Also, for him to be half Spanish, he only ever speaks Spanish to his mother. Not once did I ever hear him speak Spanglish, which threw me off. Trajo, Fluffy. Rhino is in the game for like a hot minute twice, and then he vanishes as quickly as he came. So it's a lot like my relationships. Oh, Rhino's in the city. You gotta help Peter Parker stop him. Rhino disappears. They took him away. Rhino's back at the end of the game. Now he's immune to Miles' magic powers. I never really paid attention to Miles in the comic books. I never cared about him. I was like, oh, great, bootleg black Spider-Man that's supposed to make me feel like I'm identified in some way. No, thank you. And now I find out he's got all these extra powers Peter Parker doesn't have. How the hell do you make a rip-off character, give him more powers, and I still don't give a damn? Maybe something new? Whatever. I shouldn't even be talking about this. Miles is a wet... <laughs> Miles is wet garbage. And keeping his secret identity. 
Like, no joke. Everyone knows he's Spider-Man in this shit. Like, bro. It became almost laughable at points. His uncle figures that he's Spider-Man. His mother knows he's Spider-Man. Uh, the Asian kid he works with obviously knows he's Spider-Man. Uh, who else knows he's Spider-Man? The half the whole damn neighborhood knows now. If you play the game, I'm not gonna tell you. But honest to God, I was just sitting there like, Jesus Christ. Nobody can keep an identity. It's like the guys who are making this were watching the MCU movies. And in the MCU, everybody takes off their mask because everybody has to be seen so they can get more roles or something. Branding, they call it. Absolutely ridiculous. Spider-Man went to great lengths to hide his face. But in the damn movies, every time you turn around, his mask is off. By the way, everybody that's around Miles is a goddamn super genius. Yet they're broke somehow. Like Zuckerberg became a billionaire with a trash-ass website like Facebook. These people are literally smart enough to create solid matter out of nothing, and they're living in Harlem. Lord help me. Miles' uncle is a prowler. Whoop, I spoiled that for you. And he works in the fucking train station. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, the main villain has so many characters. Like, the main villain has so many changes of heart by the end of the game. Like, the last two hours, she just goes through so many, like, like just changes. Like, one minute, oh, you you didn't tell me. Was, I'm not going to ruin it for you. But it's just kind of like, this girl make up her mind. You're a super genius, and you can't even, like, control your damn emotions? That don't make any sense. The bitch must be bipolar. Some of the key points in the game made little to no sense. And existed only to invoke emotion from you, in my personal opinion. You know, like a movie. Overall, it's a good game, I guess. I mean, it's literally Batman Arkham City with Spider-Man set in New York. And this time, it's a black kid. Holla if you hear me. I said to a harder gameplay difficulty to keep me awake during combat sequences, which can be tedious at times because you just continuously do the same crap over and over and over again. And enemy variety is pretty limited. <laughs> anyway, I give this game 3.5 DSPs out of 5.